Hello, good morning. Welcome to The Big Issue. The Big Issue is your platform for incisive analysis and riveting conversation. My name is Selom Adunu. This morning, we have quite a number of issues, actually two major issues to deal with. Um, there's been some issue between the executive and the legislature, and the judiciary has been called in, as it were, to help resolve. It has to do with the president's accent, or otherwise, to the what we've come to called the anti-LGBT bill. A number of people have gone to court to restrain or stop parliament from transmitting the said bill to uh, the office of the president for his accent. That forms part of the legislative process. Now, the president, through his secretary, wrote to the clerk of parliament who has been trying to do the transmission that he should disease and desist and cease his attempt to transmit the bill to his office because of pending Supreme Court interlocutory injunction applications before, I mean, that court, and that the president will want to await the decision or the determination of same before going ahead to do anything on the bill. The question has arisen whether indeed the suit filed at the Supreme Court has anything to do with the president's receipt of the particular document, which is the bill for his accent. Could the president have received it and said the same thing that I want to await the decision of the court before assenting to it? Would it have cost anything? Is the fact that the matter is before the Supreme Court, uh, does it stop the counting of the seven days the Constitution gives the president uh, to signal whether he will sign it or not and continue with the other things he has to do? Now, because of that, the speaker, obviously a defender of parliamentary independence, also says that he feels that the independence of parliament has been encroached upon by the executive, and he will not have any of that. In conclusion of a long statement, also said that he's also been made aware that the matter had been filed at the Supreme Court in respect of the approval of some ministers the president had asked parliament to look at. Based on that, he also said he was unable to continue with that process because of an interlocutory injunction application or matter that was before the Supreme Court. People have said it's a tit for tat. People have said that it is a situation where the two big guys are fighting, number one versus number three. What happens to us is when two elephants fight, it's the grass that will suffer. Now, majority is saying that government business is stalling. The minority says, no, you brought this upon yourself. Minority, indeed, have said notice that they may start or initiate impeachment proceedings against the president. Where would that fall? We will look at all of that with our guests this morning. Also, uh, Dr. Baumia has been meeting identifiable groups. He met uh, the Chamber of Commerce earlier in the week, and he told them that the GRA appears to be harassing them, and should he become president, he will find a way around that. The question is, is the GRA really harassing businesses is GRA asking people to fulfill the law by paying taxes? Does that amount to harassment? And he says that the GRA does so because of unrealistic targets, he says for itself. Who sets the target for the GRA? Is it the GRA itself or its government? If the target is set, can government, for example, finance ministry or economic management team, which is chaired by Dr. Baumia, say, we think this target is too high, revise it, is it possible for that to happen? If it were so, why should Dr. Baumia be blaming the GRA for setting high targets? When indeed, we know that we need the revenue. We need the revenue to help us do our things, especially now that uh, the international capital market has been close to us. We will subject those comments to some analysis in the second part of the show. I'll take a short break. I'll return, introduce my guests, provide some updates, and then we'll get a discussion underway. Once again, this is a big issue. You're welcome. You're welcome back to The Big Issue. Uh, my name is Salom Adun. It's a platform for incisive analysis and reverting conversation. We try to deal with the issues as they are and uh, make, leave you to make the decision. Now, two issues we're looking at, the impasse between the executive and the legislature. The judiciary has been called in to assist. Uh, in the center of this is politics, the anti-LGBT bill. Parliament is done did quite well by passing the bill unanimously, so you did not see the usual politicking. 
Now, the president is called upon by the constitution to accent to it. He says, wait a minute, I cannot do this now because it's a matter pending before the Supreme Court. I want to avoid the, the decision of the Supreme Court in that respect. Speaker says he won't have any of that because uh, by law, he's supposed to receive it and possibly accent to it. And because of that, he's also been made aware that there is actually a matter uh, in respect of the approval of some ministers and deputies the president had brought to parliament for consideration. The parliament was supposed to have considered that on the day, approve it or otherwise, before parliament would go on recess. Speaker, at the end of a long speech, uh, unhappy with the president's action, also said that he was also unable because of the same matter, interlocutory injunction, application, all of that before the Supreme Court. He was also unable uh, to continue with the processes. So the president doesn't get his... Uh, ministers and deputies. The Speaker also doesn't get his bill accented to. This is where we are. The judiciary is in the mix. We await what the judiciary will say in respect of this. This is a matter we are all watching with better breath to see the direction the judiciary will point the country to. Also, Dr. Baumia has been saying that the GRE appears to be harassing businesses. And in fact, he was speaking to businesses, the Chamber of Commerce, and that should he become president, he will ensure that stops. He will grant tax amnesty to everybody and then start afresh. Um, give what we call or bring what we call the flat rate so that everybody, in respect of what they do, I mean, it's fine. No GRA harassment the way he thinks it happens now. GRA to have said no, they do not do so. They do not even have the mandate to harass anybody. They only go and ask people to pay their taxes. We will look at all of that today. Before that, let me provide you some updates about what has been happening. Now, the minority in Parliament says a letter from the Presidency on the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill is a monumental threat to Parliament and Ghana's democracy. Speaking to journalists in Tamale, the Tamale South Member of Parliament, Harun Idrisi, says the directive is a reflection of President Kufado's quest to dominate other arms of government. Let's hear from the minority in Parliament. This is a monumental threat to Ghana's democracy and a monumental threat to parliament as an institution. By Article 93, we are clothed with legislative authority and legislative mandate. This letter only reflects President Nana Adudankwe's quest of predominance over other organs of state. That is unacceptable and that must be fought by all persons who love democracy and who cherish the principles and values of the 1992 Constitution. It is not for the Attorney General to advise the President not to take any step. The Constitution dictates what the President should do. Ascend to it or refer it back to Parliament with an explanation or to the Council of State. It didn't say he should refer it to the Attorney General. Yes, Article 88 gives him a mandate. The Constitution is very clear. So what we want to do, and it's part of the matters I raised before Parliament, we must now know when did Parliament remit the bill to the President, and we will count seven days. If seven days have lapsed and he has not assented to, and he has not written back to Parliament, nor to the Council of State, will hold the President responsible for a constitutional break, and he should know the legal, lawful, constitutional consequences of his action. The Honorable Harry Nedu is a seasoned lawyer in this country. Um, he's been in Parliament for over three times, and so it is coming to me as a surprise for him to make such a comment. Um, in 1994, there was a Supreme Court decision in the case of Ajete versus Agumufu the second. Now, in that case, the Supreme Court had the occasion to indicate that as soon as there's an application or there's a motion that is sent to the court, it is enough justification for that application to be seen as an injunction by itself. What the applicant seeks to stop the respondent from doing is almost the same thing like the court 
telling the respondent not to do it because it's an application. It is possible that there's going to be a ruling in favor of the applicant. The Honorable Renardus, you cannot say that such an application or an attempt is not an injunction by itself. It is an injunction by itself because our Supreme Court has on a number of occasions had the opportunity to rule on this matter. So the president did not err. The president is within the confines of the law. All right, so you, you saw that indeed uh, Harun Edwards was speaking to uh, the media in parliament, not in Tamale. Uh, so the Speaker of Parliament, Abang Babin, has suspended the consideration of the nomination of ministers and deputy ministers of state by, the president, Akufo, by president Akufalu over his refusal to accept the bill uh, on the human sexual rights and family values. A letter from the office of the president dated March 18, 2024, ordered parliament to desist and cease from transmitting the anti-gay bill to the president for his action due to two pending applications before the Supreme Court seeking an injunction on the bill. In a formal statement on the floor of parliament, um, Abang Babin, the speaker, says the House is unable uh, to also continue with the uh, processing of the president's ministerial and deputy ministerial nominees. I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the court titled Robson Nelson Eche K. Dafiamapo versus, versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General, suit number J1 slash 12 slash 2024, which process was served on the 19th, that is yesterday, March 2024, and an injunction motion on notice seeking to restrain the speaker from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. Honorable members, in the light of this process, the House is unable to continue to consider the nominations of His Excellency the President. All right, so that was the Speaker of Parliament making known his intentions um, that he was also unable to continue with dealing with the President's nominees. Uh, for various ministerial positions. So as we speak, Parliament is on recess. We understand there are moves to recall Parliament to attend to um, the urgent matters that were left unattended. Uh, so the majority and minority have also been at each other's throat. Majority uh, blaming the Speaker and the minority MPs for uh, stalling government business. Minority says, no, you brought this upon yourself. And so you have to deal with it. We'll see how the next few days uh, play out. Uh, my guests for uh, this segment of the discussion, the Honorable Osebo Su Amwa, popularly known as O.B. Amwa, uh, Minister of State, Local Government, also Member of Parliament for Equipping South, um, Local Government, Decentralization, and Rural Development, uh, Member of Parliament also for Equipping South, uh, Dominic Ayeni, he's a former Deputy uh, Attorney General, and he's also Member of Parliament for uh, Bogatanga East, I suppose. Franklin Kujo, uh, Bogatanga East. Franklin Kujo is president, uh, Imani Africa. is a regular guest, a permanent guest, I should say, on the program. And so these are my guests for this segment of the program. Uh, you're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable uh, Obiyama, pleasure to have you. Um, uh, it's been a while. We, we saw you uh, um, in the studio setting, but that's fine. Um, so, yes, you've been in Parliament for a number of years, and it's sad you are not returning to Parliament. And uh, your successor in the, in the constituency has been chosen, and it means that you're, you're hanging your boots more or less. But this matter we are seeing now, the executive legislature and the judiciary in the mix, these are all three arms of government are being called upon to do something. Is it the first time we've seen this or you've seen this in your 
uh, uh, in your parliamentary or like in your parliamentary career or similar issues have arisen before in the past? Well, thank you so much. Uh, good morning to you and to our viewers and listeners. And <clears throat> of course, you said that this the first time I've been here. Um, of course, you don't invite me anyway. <laughs> I used to be very regular when we were in Adabraka. Okay. I've been a very good friend, but mm -hmm. probably you have new friends now. No, no, no. So, the old friends are the best. <laughs> good. Um, you've raised various issues. And I think if I have to start from the end, the speaker, as speaker of parliament, did not speak for the majority of us. Hmm. It's a fact. In the sense that if you read his statement very well, the first 10 paragraphs or so were directly um, attacks on the president for no reason at all for some of us. And then, of course, when he was ending, he said that he had been served with an application for injunction against the Speaker, against Parliament and Attorney General, so he could not proceed with the approval of uh, ministers. In the first place, the matter in court by the Fiamma Po, Honorable the Fiamma Po, doesn't have anything to do with mm. those who so, have so gone we'll, for So we'll delve betting. into those here. Yeah, just, yes. Just preliminary comments. So. Doesn't have anything to do with those, with those who have gone for vetting. And indeed, there was no application for interlocutory injunction. A search at the Supreme Court registry had confirmed that there was no application for interlocutory injunction when the speaker made those comments. So obviously, that's why I say that the speaker really didn't speak for us, hmm. for the majority of us, because what he said in respect of even the application for injunction was not factual. Number two, if the secretary to the president, by, by the way, even before this matter in parliament, there were comments by including the former president, John Mahama, that he was surprised that the secretary to the president could write to parliament. Some of us were, were surprised mm. until we were able to show that when it comes to bills, sending bills to the president for assent, the clerk writes to the secretary to the president. The secretary to the president would then respond whether the president has given assent to it or whether there are issues to it. I have copies of such correspondence from even previous administration. Mm. So that issue cannot be an issue that we should even raise anywhere. And of course, the matter of the letter from the secretary to the president, Nanabidi to Asante. I mean, if you read the letter, I don't think that this should be something that the speaker should act as a judge, a speaker, and even uh, some are saying that he was acting as an opposition presidential candidate of the NDC. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate, but if you read the letter from Nanabidi to Asante, you may decide not to agree with him. It's your right. He's saying that we have been served. We are told that the applications for injunction against transmitting the bill and then also giving assent to the bill. We want to wait for the court to take a decision. You may disagree with him. You may say that, why don't you sign while the court goes on? He says that I'm law-abiding. I'm going by the constitutional dictates. I think that we should wait for the Supreme Court to deal with this matter. Does that warrant such words like um, trying to undermine our constitution, undermine democracy, and all those things? I think it's very unfortunate. Mm. And I think the speaker looked very angry. He had to travel all the way and even ask parliament to hold on because he was on his way mm. outside Ghana to come to parliament. Indeed, he came all right, came to read his statement, didn't take any other step, and then told us that he was off again. Mm. It's, it's, it's very sad and unfortunate for our parliament. As you asked me, um, by the end of this year, I would have spent 16 years in parliament. I've never seen such a situation. Mm. Of course, you may say that this is the first time that you have a speaker who doesn't, or who was not nominated by the majority. So some of these things may be okay, but the speaker's conduct on that day did not really look well for some of us. Mm. And indeed, he, he had said 
If you remember very well when the minority purported to have rejected the 2022 budget, he has said that this is a hung parliament. We don't have any majority. It's 137, 137. And then if the independent had chosen to sit with uh, the majority, it doesn't mean that we have any majority in parliament. And proceeded to let the 137 reject the budget. Until the 138 came in to say that, no, you cannot reject the budget. The matter went to court, and the court said that there's a deputy speaker who sits can also vote. Mm. If you see such an attitude, if you watch how a speaker behaves this way, then obviously these are some of the consequences. Because as I said, he, he, he sometimes he behaves very much like somebody on the side of the minority. Whereas uh, as a speaker, he cannot be counted. Mm. And of course, as I said, he speaks sometimes like the opposition leader, presidential candidate for the NDC. It's his right. Mm. But I'm saying that if he's a speaker, he has to speak and speak for all of us. Mm. So let, let's look at the genesis of all of this. So before Speaker <coughs> Michael Kwe left, I mean, he managed to get out of parliament to uh, introduce this uh, thing called the private members bill. It's always been on the books. It's yeah. always in the law. Yeah. But parliament, you know, had been somewhat restrained from dealing with it based yeah. on certain interpretation you have put on certain portions of the constitution, uh, placing a charge on the consolidated fund, etc. Yeah. But he managed to get parliament uh, to, to begin to do things like this. Yeah. Uh, now, we have a number of private members' bills being considered by parliament. Some have gone through, others are pending the president accent, for example. Do you think that the way the floodgates for uh, private members' bills institution uh, is being opened and what we are seeing now, you know, potent some difficulty for us in the future in our democracy, in parliament, legislature, etc. Yes, you've made a very good point. Um, as you said, until Professor Kwe um, made every effort for us to be able to um, bring the private members bill, it was very difficult for any speaker to accept um, the situation of members bringing a bill on their own without the government being involved or the attorney general spearheading it. And of course, when it comes to private members' bill, it will mean that the attorney general has not been involved. The attorney general is the chief advisor to the government. It will mean that it will not go to cabinet for the cabinet subcommittee to even look at it and for the president to also transmit it to parliament. It has its own problems. And if you look at this particular uh, family values bill, Attorney General wrote copiously to Parliament that these are some of the issues that we should consider, including, of course, the fact that um, it will be a pass or it will be a bill for, for the government. Now, if we don't tread cautiously, as you said, the floodgates would have been opened and we have some difficulties in passing such bills. Because if the president hasn't looked at the bill. His cabinet hasn't considered it. Mm. Attorney General didn't spearhead said bill. And then you bring it to parliament. It's passed in whatever way. It gets to the president. He still wants to have a look at it and wants to have advice from his attorney general and other members, or probably even refer to Council of State before he can give assent to it. It's obvious. Mm. And these are some of the problems that we are seeing. And I think it's part of growing up as a democracy. We should not let it look like anybody wants to undermine our democracy or a constitutional rule or disregard any arms of government. Those words are too strong words, and they don't really help in building our democracy. Mm. The president may have his own problems with any bill. This is right under the Constitution. This is right under the Constitution. If you don't agree with him, take the next step. That's why we have the Supreme Court. The president can be sued. To the, the attorney, attorney general. general yes. yes, to the attorney general. So why do we create the impression that if we don't agree, then there's war? Mm. I don't understand it. So that's the difficulty some of us have. Even yeah, on the floor of parliament. There's, there's debate. Even war on of the words, floor, maybe. Yeah, debate. even on the floor of parliament. I don't agree with how we conduct ourselves. Mm. I don't agree with you. I get out to speak. You don't even want me to speak. You want me to just shut up and sit down because I don't agree with you. And this attitude is what is bringing up all these things. But you, you, you are in the majority. So this attitude is from who? The minority? 
Mostly. And mostly. then the minority is able to cower the majority not, into not submission. Cowing, not cowing. What I'm saying is that mm. there should be some mutual respect. Mm. You make your point. I may not agree with you. I get up to make my point. Let me make my point. Mm. At the end of the day, majority will say that this is what we want. And I'm saying that it's, it's something that is beginning to become a culture in parliament. Mm. And the speaker should be careful he doesn't get involved in this. Mm. Because if the speaker doesn't agree with the president, he can still make that point without creating the impression that the person that I'm not agreeing with is undermining the constitution or democracy or is teaching parliament with contempt. I don't think it's, it's proper. No, but I think his point perhaps is the executive or the presidency <coughs> asking parliament to cease and desist. If the letter is here. To cease the and desist. The last paragraph says, in the circumstances, you are kindly requested. Mm -hmm. You are kindly requested to cease and desist from transmitting the bill to the president until the matters before the Supreme Court are resolved. Mm. I mean, if you think that even these words are harsh, mm. it's your own interpretation. He's shown Ketsi enough to say that you are kindly requested. The, so the kindly is the, is the Ketsi? Of course. Mm. And then he's given the reason why he thinks that that should be the situation. You may not agree with him. He has not gone out of any way to attack parliament or to insult parliament. Mm. No, you see, you may not agree with him, but he has done what he will do. He will not accept or he will not receive the, the, the bill. I, I was because, thinking because that he could receive the bill no. and still make the same point. Unfortunately, you are not the president. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's because he thought that his attention had been drawn to two seals mm -hmm. in the Supreme Court by his attorney general. Mm -hmm. And his interpretation was that because... As application for interlocutory, interlocutory injunction, he should not take any step. Mm. The speaker in responding brought out the main issues as to in some situations where people think that or lawyers think that once the matter has gone to court, no further steps should be taken. Mm. Others also think that until the matter is heard in, in court, you can't take any mm. step. Some courts frown on the, that thing. That once the matter has come here, don't take any step. He, the speaker said those things, and I, I, I agree with him. But the point is, if the president, for any reason, has decided to take one part of what we all think that should be the situation in court, is it a crime? Mm. Does it mean that he's undermining the constitution? I don't think so. And I think if we are measured in our response to this, and after all, whatever step the president takes, there are remedies. Mm. That's why we have the Supreme Court. Yes, in the, gonna, in the yes. same way, whatever, whatever action parliament is, there could be remedies. But yes. the point is, he asking them to, to, to he seize asking them and desist. He asking okay. them to seize and desist yeah. from transmitting mm -hmm. is a fact and that the, he's aware that... Should, yes, but the, he's aware that there is a matter at the Supreme Court yes. seeking to restrain the Speaker of Parliament yeah. from, from transmitting... transmitting. Not to stop him from receiving. Yes. So he could receive no, it. And also to, to stop him from, from... No, receiving it doesn't necessarily mean he's yeah. he, he will accept it. it. So the, the, you, the, the course, provision in one makes, makes, makes the provision. Of course, if you receive it... You, you are, yeah, so he could are, receive it and say, I've received it. Yes. But I know of these matters at the Supreme Court. I've been advised by my Attorney General to await the outcome no, of that decision. No, but the Constitution has given you the, the time limit within which... You have to. No, no, but it's, a, but, but it's the same. It's the same law. No, but you can't interpret it. it in, in no, no. But way. what I'm saying is, it, it, it will. I'm not sure it will have caused this storm. If you said, okay, I know the constitution has given me seven days to do this, oh, yeah. but the, the Supreme Court is also a creation of the constitution. The Supreme Court has been seized with this matter. Yes, I do yes. not want to take any step that will be prejudicial mm -hmm. to the determination of the matter yes. at the Supreme Court. Yes. And because of that, yes. I will await the decision of the Supreme Court. <laughs> Whatever that the Supreme Court says, that's what I will do. If the Supreme Court says go ahead and do it, then now my seven days begins to begin to count. No. That, that is what it is. That's, that would be your interpretation. Okay. And I don't think that he not even going the way you, you mm. think that he should have gone should create any storm. Mm. That's my position. I, see. I don't see why he should create any storm. I see. Let, let, that let me... I cannot give assent to it. Mm. Let's wait for the Supreme Court to take a decision. Would the world end? Mm. Will Ghana collapse because of such a, mm. a step? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean... There are, there are several bills which sometimes stay, stay in parliament for, for decades. But, but there, are, there are bills with public this, interest. 
Of course. This is not the only bill pack with interest. Mm. Of course. The speaker had shown from day one that he, he will even be uncompromising in, uh, in uh, prosecuting this bill. At a point in time, he asked anybody who was against the bill to stand up in parliament. It's never happened anywhere. That when we are considering a bill, you, you come to parliament and tell us that whoever is against the bill, get up for us to see you. Is that how we... But is there anything wrong with that? With, with that everything wrong with that. Mm. Because so if, if you have a problem with... Case, a, for example, listen. if you have a problem with maybe the E-Levy bill, for example. No, 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 listen. It wouldn't have been difficult for me listen. to get up to... Listen, to, to, when a bill comes to, to parliament, hand. he has been former deputy attorney general. Mm. When a bill comes to parliament, you cannot say that from first clause to the last clause to interpretation everything, everybody will say we accept it. Mm -hmm. We go through it. We propose amendments. We debate the amendments. If it's, it's carried, it's carried. If it's not carried, it's not carried. I see. So if you tell me right from the beginning, who do, anybody who doesn't accept this will get up and let's see you. I mean, I thought it was just a, a harmless <laughs> well, position. Well, well. A harmless. <laughs> <laughs> I was not even in parliament. I was sitting in my office watching TV. I said, ah, but what is this speaker up to? That no, but you're not in parliament. Okay, your, your office as in the, the ministerial office. I was, yeah, I was in the office in parliament. In parliament. But why are we not in the chamber? No. You I are mean, doing I, other things. Yeah, no, I got to... No, you don't have to be in the chamber 24 hours. Okay. All right. I got to my office first. I wanted to you see what to was happening. Yeah. Then I walked to the chamber. Okay. But I was in the office ready to go to the mm. chamber. And I saw that scene. I said, ah, but where is this coming from? That somebody... Everybody should get up whether they accept their bill or not. Mm. This never happened in our history. Uh, I, I see. Uh, um, Doc, um, Dr. Dominic Ayeni, former deputy attorney general uh, and MP <coughs> for Boga East. Thanks for, for joining us. And, uh, we are happy Thank to you, have Salam. you. Um, so, um, this has been quite unprecedented in my view. Maybe right. you guys are, are, have seen more. Executive, legislature, now judiciary, all in, in, in the mix. Um, I started by asking about the private members' bill opportunity. You think that the way we are proceeding, because all of this has been brought about by the private members bill and the opportunity the parliament under uh, Professor Marco Kwe gave us to be able to do this. A number of bills have gone through and, and, and matters have gone through using the same route, but some have also suffered some difficulty at the point of accent. You think that there should be something we should do about how we are approaching this issue of private members bill, or you think the way we are just proceeding is the way to go? Uh, thank you very much, Salom. I mean, first of all, I need to apologize for uh, coming in late. Oh, it, was, it was not intentional. Oh, okay. saw you well, late. I... Okay. <laughs> well, he's an honest man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I drove to Adabraka. Ah, too only bad. to be too informed bad. that uh, we are he here. moved here. Too bad. Yeah, but thank you very much. Whilst I was on the way, I was listening to my uh, very good friend and brother, uh, the Honorable Obi mm. and you know, incidentally, we happen to be classmates from law school. Oh, I see. Yes. So um, he mm. raised a number of issues, and mm. I, I think that preliminarily mm. I should address them before okay. I, I mean, answer your question. Go ahead. The first one was with respect to whether or not what Mr. Speaker did reflected, you know, the, the views or preferences of uh, the majority of mm. uh, you know members of Parliament. Uh, for me. Parliament has a way of determining whether there is a majority, uh, which is that the matter is put to a vote. Mm. This matter was never put to a vote. Mm. Mr. Speaker, as the presiding officer and the person who runs the affairs of Parliament, where, whether you know, uh, we are in I mean, a, a session or out of session, um, decided that he was going to adjourn the House Senate day mm. on the basis of uh, a decision that he had taken uh, with respect to the... Um, letter you know that emanated from the secretary to the to the president so there was no i mean there was no vote for us to determine a majority but in, in any case okay with the unfortunate demise of our brother the honorable member for ejisu mm -hmm. all right we are now 137 versus 137 136 and 137. Yeah, well i mean the independent yes. has decided to caucus with them uh, so okay. let's let's say that they were 137. <laughs> i'm, not, I'm not sure if this had been put to a vote the house would have been, uh, you know, split, you know, down and, the down yeah. the line. So yeah. there couldn't have been any majority. Mm. Then also the issue of the conduct of Mr. Speaker, whether I mean uh, the speaker conducted himself uh, in a partisan manner and so on and so forth. I think that is rather unfortunate. It is unfortunate because the speaker was not, um, you know, le le or let me put it this way: the speaker did not mean words when he said that what he was doing was in defense of the sovereignty 
of uh, parliament, okay, as uh, the, you know, the people's representative, I mean, the um, house of uh, representation. And uh, I don't think that the decision he took, you know, in respect of the letter um, was any, anything other than right. The reason is simply because, you see, if you read the letter, the tone of the letter, mm -hmm. all right, is actually, um, I will say with all due respect to the secretary to the president, very unfortunate. Because, you see, if you were writing to advise parliament about the pendency of uh, the, the Supreme Court actions and the president's decision not to accept, you know, service of the bill on him, you could have said that, you know, the president has been advised on this matter and the president has taken a decision not to accept <coughs> service. But to other parliament, there were cease and desist. Mm. I mean, he said, kindly, 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 kindly request. Uh, uh, no, no, no. He, to, to, to cease and desist. <laughs> yeah. It's not all right. to you. No, that, that is an instruction. That's an order. Mm. All right. I mean, the Honorable Obi Amor is a lawyer. He should know that where I cease and desist, desist order is directed as a person to stop conducting himself or herself right. in a certain way. All report. right. Basically, what uh, the, secretary's, the secretary of the president's letter did was to order parliament not to take actions mandated by the constitution. Mm. And in fact, I think that that was a, I mean, a, a breach of the constitution because at the end of the day, what the constitution requires to be done has not been done. Mm. And uh, the, for me, it's the conduct of the president is rather reprehensible. Mm. It is not the conduct Would of the Would it have made any speaker. difference if the letter was signed by the president himself and not his secretary? Would it have made any difference? Mm. Oh, it wouldn't have made any difference. It's the substantive content mm. of the letter that matters, mm. okay? First of all, they are reneging by that, this letter, they are reneging from, you know, um, you know complying with the Constitution. Mm. All right, that is the first thing. Mm. And that's a clear breach of the Constitution mm. because the Constitution says that the bill, when passed by Parliament, should be transmitted to the President for his assent mm. and outlines the procedure. If the President is not in a position to assent to the bill, <coughs> the Constitution itself, in Article 106, outlines the procedure by which the bill can be, I mean, sent back to Parliament, mm. all right? So if, I mean, uh, if I were the Attorney General of the Republic, okay, I would have advised the, the, the President to merely write back to Mr. Speaker saying that, all right, on account of the fact, the pendency of these suits, okay, I am unable to ascend the bill. That would have been, I mean, a reason enough to comply with the constitutional requirement you know, to state the reasons mm. uh, for not, no, no, I mean, for not assenting to a bill. So if this had been done, it would then have been left with Parliament, okay, to marshal a two-thirds majority to override the President's attempted veto. And then, you know, I mean, I say that, Mr. President, you must sign the bill. Mm. But what has happened is that, look, from all indications, this President is not ready. He's not ready. He's never been ready. You know, to sign. I mean, uh, to uh, I mean, assent to this bill. Why? And why? Why so? Why? Why do you make? Oh, the, why, why the indications so? are there. The Honourable Obi Amoa has, uh, you know, referred to the fact that the Attorney General made copious input right. into the. I mean, uh, the the bill when it was under consideration by Parliament, and that is true. I'm not a member of the uh, Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs Committee, mm. but I'm a friend to the committee and I attend its meetings regularly. Okay. In all the sessions, almost all the sessions relating to this bill, I was there. In, uh, on one occasion, the Attorney General and her deputy attended upon the committee. Mm. They made their views known. But their views were overridden by the views of the majority of the members around the table. Mm. And that's how democracy works. And the bill finally landed, you know, on the floor of Parliament and was passed by I mean, a unanimous vote of the, I mean, of the House of Parliament. Okay, so... The Attorney General was given an opportunity to make an input. That input was rejected by the majority, I mean, the, the, uh, the elected representatives of the people. Mm. In other words, democracy prevailed as far as this bill is concerned. And if the President has any, uh, you know, reservations about the substantive content of the bill, for instance, if he thinks that the bill has gone too far, if he thinks that the bill has breached any provision of the Constitution, it is left to the president to convince the elected, I mean, uh, uh, members, uh, uh, representatives of the people, you know, to take those into account, okay, in taking a second look at the bill, mm. okay, or convincing his side of the house to vote against the bill so that the bill never comes to him. But what he has done is basically to say that he wants to eat his cake 
and then have it. And you cannot have it, you cannot have it that way. Now, to your question about uh, private members' bills. So this is only prelims. This is the preliminary, <laughs> these are my preliminary <laughs> remarks. Uh, you know, the private members' bills. I agree with the Honorable Obi Amor when he says that um, the interpretation, the previous interpretation that was placed on private members' bills was very restrictive. Uh -huh. Basically, that interpretation was to the effect that every bill would require some expensive, uh, I mean, expenditure on the part of the state. And therefore, private members could not literally bring any bills, all right? But subsequently, under, I mean, Michael Quay, he initiated this, uh, you know, I mean, he, he reinterpreted Article 108 in a way that allows private members' bill to prevail. And that is what ended, I mean, ended up bringing this, uh, I mean, um, uh, what do you call it? No. Enabling the, the sponsors of this bill, you know, to bring the bill to the floor, okay? Now, I think that this is a very good development mm. in the sense that, you see, um, private members' bills actually enhance, you know, the lawmaking power of parliament. With our private members' bills, <clears throat> what then happens is that parliament becomes just a receptacle mm. of legislative initiatives by the presidency. So we are there. The, I mean, uh, a ministry decides that they want to, in, I mean, uh, 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 enact a certain policy into law. They, they, they formulate it into the, I mean, in the form of a bill, and they come and lay it before us, all right? Elsewhere, it is the members of parliament themselves who think, I mean, and, and, and deal with matters relating to public policy that must be enacted into law, all right? So sometimes, government-sponsored bills are fewer than the bills that are sponsored by private members. If you take, I mean, by the, the lawmakers themselves. So if you take the U.S. Congress, for instance, okay? The House of Representatives recently just sent, transmitted a bill to the Senate, okay, that related to a myriad of, I mean, uh, policy issues that they wanted, they wanted to deal with, including whether or not to fund, I mean, the Ukraine, the Ukraine war, all right? So the, um, a one eight, I mean, 108 mechanism of private members' bills is one that will strengthen the lawmaking powers, you know, of parliament. Mm. And then that, that will minimize parliament's, uh, you know, current situation where, Parliament is basically a receptacle of bills emanating from the, from the president. Having said that, I think that any time a private member's bill lands on the floor, all right, it is incumbent on the executive branch of government, all right, because ultimately the president will be the one signing it into law to take an interest in the bill mm. and, and to actively an, participate. They took an interest in this one. Only that their suggestions <coughs> were overridden. Yes, uh, yes the yeah, yeah, they took an interest. They took an interest, I mean, but the, it was uh, not only this one. There was the one that was uh, the criminal, uh, you know... Um, the witchcraft, anti-witchcraft. Anti-witchcraft and, 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 so, and so on. And that were, I mean, yeah. initiated by, you know, Susu. our first mm -hmm. time, uh, I mean, uh, Sosu. All right. Yes, they took an interest. Okay. But the point I'm making is that they should, as much as possible, okay, make sure that the, the views of the executive, all right, um, some of the views carry the day. Why but do I say how, that? How would they ensure that? Because you put it to vote. No, we put it to vote. But yes. the executive branch, the party in, 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 in government, has members. Mm. And they have a majority leader. They have, I mean, a chief whip, all right, that can, that can marshal, I mean, uh, their members to support the position of the executive. Mm. All right? And Unless, of start course... on the committee level. Yes. Both, I mean, I mean in committee mm. and then... In, in the, I mean, no, no, at no, plenary, no. okay? Because, you see, if you take an interest in it and you don't drive the process, what will happen is that at the end of the day, what happened with the anti-gay bill will happen to you. Mm. Because on the floor, though the attorney general came to committee, he took an interest, he wrote, you know, to the, I mean, the committee, proposed amendments and so on and so forth, okay? When it came to the floor vote, there was no action on their part. They were cowardly. No, the voice was just no, put. No, no, no. They the, were cowardly. <laughs> yes. the, the question was just put. <laughs> that if you support it or no, if no, you are no, for no, it. No, no, no. Please, uh, Salom. Some, some, let, me, some, let, let me say this. Let me say it. And he, he, knows, he knows it. He knows it. Intimidated. He knows it. That, you see, the bill went through the various stages. Mm. It was laid for the first time, first reading. In the second reading, the principles of the bill were debated. Mm. All right? Then it came to consider and then referred to the committee. And then it came back to the House 
for consideration. Mm. At the consideration stage, all right, their members took part, uh, led by the chairman, the honorable, uh, I mean, uh, Imedu, mm -hmm. Kwame Imedu, mm -hmm. to make amendments to the bill. But when it came to the overall vote, mm -hmm. okay, they chicken out. There was a, the no, no. speaker put a question. Yes. And, and the yes had it. Yes, he said the yes had it. <laughs> yes. But nothing and prevented they... them from standing up and saying that we, we do have not, we, mm. we have issues with it. Mm. The only member, and I, I applaud her for her courage, mm. was the honorable member for um, Abilukuma West. West. Mm. The honorable, uh, I mean, uh, Osla Usu. Okay. She was the only person who stood up and said, she had issues and articulated those issues. But she was just only one person. And even when the, the, the bill was being put to a vote, she actually But the majority leader, now majority leader, the yes. deputy, yes. Apenu Markin, also raised some issues and proposed some amendments. Yes, he proposed amendments. Those amendments were overridden. Mm -hmm. And this is not the first time that amendments are being, I mean, are overridden by a majority vote mm -hmm. of the members, I mean, on the floor. So, Selam, the point I'm making is that, you see, the mechanism of private members' bills will actually strengthen the lawmaking power of parliament, mm. all right, and enhance the constitutional role that parliament was established under and by the constitution to play, okay? But the executive branch must adopt an approach that allows, I mean, the, I mean, the, 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 the president's, I mean, uh, uh, or his ministers, okay, to make input uh, that, I mean, are reflected in the final version of the bill. Mm. That is why that is why I think that I mean there's uh, something lacking. Mm. Yes. So so let, now let's let's deal with it. The, the and, and then there was something that he, he also said about the uh, former president that I, I forgot to respond to. <laughs> okay. You see, Which former president? The no, that, former that, president the, Mama. I the mean, uh, president wrote to, Mama. Yeah, yes. Wrote to yes, yes, yes. You see, what o the Honorable Obiamo has said is true, that by practice and convention, yeah. there has been exchanges between secretaries to the president. Mm. What the I mean, His Excellency. President Mahama was referring to was the content mm. of the letter, mm. not the fact that it was written by the secretary. That's why I asked whether right. if this had been signed by the president, it would have made any difference. I, so, I, yeah. so Mohammed's view, <coughs> president, former President Mohammed's view is that given the content of the letter, yeah. it shouldn't have come from the secretary to the well, president. Well, the secretary, secretary. given the con, I, I believe the, I mean, if it had come from the president himself, you know, President to, I mean, uh, speaker. To, to speaker, okay, I don't think it would have made so much of a difference because what I, I, I deplore, and I think that is what the former president was also deploring, mm. is the content of this letter, mm. the commanding language. So, so he had okay? no point then, because if it is not the first time such a thing is happening, secretary writing to the clerk mm -hmm. for their bosses maybe, Yeah. then what was his, his, his concern? Because... I'm sure in this time, <coughs> the same exchange might have happened. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, That's no, that, 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 that didn't so happen. What, what there, was there, he, there is, there is what, what, uh, what was he trying to say then? Well, my interpretation of what he was trying to say was that, the, I mean, the secretary to the president's mm. language, Language. All right, the substantive content of the letter was wrong. Mm. Okay. I, I think that that's what he was trying to say. Mm. Very well. Uh, um, Honorable uh, uh, Obi, yes. the, it does appear that the, the president or the, gov the government is quite... Uh, that feels uneasy with this anti-gay bill. So we saw mm -hmm. it coming. So the first time we saw a real uh, uh, bill go through this, this, private, this private member's process was in respect to the death penalty, which the president signed. Now, from the anti-witchcraft bill to the death penalty in the Armed Forces Act, yeah. you know, we've seen the president try to play some, I won't call it game, but perhaps <laughs> His mind was, we, some of us think, or people think, that his mind was drawn to the fact that at this pace, you may still be, com you may still be confronted with the anti-gay bill. And once you've signed the others, you may have to sign it. So we saw the comments he made on the anti-witchcraft bill that the bill must come from him or the executive because he thinks he plays a charge on the consolidated fund, etc. He agrees with the content of it. He will soon take the steps or initiate the steps to get this, go through the process properly or you know yeah. and so now here we are so it's and does appear Thank that he you. was trying to prepare the grounds for a thing like this and yeah. even after the passage by parliament of this bill we, we saw a number of things finance minister quickly writing putting some document together telling us that we will lose 3.8 billion dollars should the president accent to this a number of people spoke now quickly 
president meets the diplomatic community at Pibiati somewhere, tells them that he is he is be made aware of a, a, a suit by a private citizen, when indeed, at the time he was making that comment, the private citizen hadn't filed. He filed the day after. So it does appear that the, the, the president feels uneasy about it. I, I don't well, know why. Well, I, I, I hope you are not yes, being persuaded by the kind of statements that my friends from NEC make. Mm -hmm. No, I'm these are, these are, these are facts. Ask me a question. Let me that, that's an unfair yeah. comment. These are facts. These are facts that he has laid out. These are facts that he has laid out. These are facts that he has laid out. They are, they are, they are factual. I hope, I hope <laughs> you are not important. You, you just listen to me and put down your comments. Oh, yes, so, right. so, yes, so, so, let's make your point. Yes. The impression is being created mm. that indeed NDC is anti-gay mm. and the rest, the rest of us, we are pro-gay. Mm. I mean, that is, that is far from the truth. I'm very unfortunate. That is how come that even on the floor, mm. when you want to make amendments, propose amendments and speak against some other aspects, people intimidate you. Mm. I remember very well the chairman of the committee, Monabu Anyimedu, at a point had to just get up and pack his books and leave. I was in parliament that because day. Because he was being intimidated. He was being, not, they would not even allow him to speak. They would shout at him, scream at him, as if the moment you want to propose any amendment to this bill, that means you are pro-gay. It's very unfortunate. Mm. And that narrative is what appears to be going on that, of course, the president is a lawyer, very, very senior lawyer. It doesn't mean that because he's anti-gay, anything you come and put before him, he has to give his assent to it. Because there, there are implications to it. Mm. And those who are saying that we should look at the rights of those we, we want to condemn, don't they have a point? And if you're a lawyer, is that not what you look at? He's sitting here, former deputy attorney general, and a lecturer in law. Is that not what you would tell his students? So that impression that as for the noise, some members of parliament will make so much noise that they are the ones who are anti-gay. That is, once you raise any issue, you are pro-gay. That thing should, be, should not be countenanced, and that thing should not form part of the narrative. Mm. If it's NEC who are saying it, Fine, I'm sitting here saying that me, I have never supported gay practice. But that doesn't mean as a lawyer, anything that is thrown, I should accept it. I mean, even murderers who have been condemned in cells, even in cells, they have rights. Mm. So if anybody should get up to say that those practicing this whole thing have also, also have rights, we should look at their rights. And if people even say that, if I come to sit here, if I come to sit here and say that such persons have rights, such persons should be allowed to also um, pursue their rights. If I don't even make the comments well, I could be held liable. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the issues that people have raised. And as a lawyer, trained lawyer, I think that some of these things should be considered. As there's no way I would say that this practice should be countenanced. As a Christian, as a lawyer, by my upbringing, culture and everything. But it doesn't mean that if anybody raises these things, I should not even allow him to speak. And that's what is going on. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. And if we continue this way, this is our parliament. Unfortunately, some of us uh, were saying that this is the first time that we had even seen members of parliament jumping onto the stage and throwing blows. Mm. That's what it has come to. And it's very unfortunate. People should be allowed to express their opinion, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. This constitution protests everybody. Mm. So people should be allowed to express themselves. But if by expressing yourself, you are pigeonholed, you are tagged, it's very dangerous. If you are not careful, the moderates, the moderates will just be pushed aside and the hawks will take over. Mm. I see. And the, and the you, hawks... You get my point. Yes. Now, to my good friend. I, I, I know he remembers very well page 28. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we all remember page 28. Yes, we do. And the consequence of page 28. Now, if a speaker of parliament comes to tell me that an application for injunction has been made, when the application has not been made, well, what is the implication of that? Mm. I mean, who, who, who gave him that information? How did that information find itself in his speech? Those who did the research for him, how far did they go in doing that research for that expression to appear in his speech? To the extent that because an application has been made for injunction, I'm standing on that application, 
to make sure that, or to insist that the approval of Vettel Minister should not be considered. Mm. But lo and behold, when a search was conducted, it turned out that no application had been made. And so, will he take the step to have this um, corrected or even taken out of the hands that? Because, it, I mean, I have, I have the search report and everything. Mm. And it never happened. Attorney General View has written to him and attached the search report showing that no such application had been made as at the time the speaker was speaking. And indeed, on the day that Attorney General made the search at 9.15 a.m., it was by 10.30 somewhere that the application was made. Mm. And we don't have to talk about these things. I, I'm not being personal, but I'm saying that if the speaker had been well briefed, if the research had gone very well, some of these things could have been avoided. And for him to use this as a major point in saying that the minister should not be approved, it's very unfortunate. I see. I don't know whether you have answers to this. This is it. Yeah, yes, I've, I've seen it. Yes, so, so this is it. I've seen it. I've, I've seen a, it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. The other point that has been raised is uh, we may go for a break. But let, yes, let, let me go for a break, come back, and then we'll deal with whether or not, uh, for example, if you have a substantive relief you are seeking mm -hmm. and perpetual injunction is part of the substantive relief you are seeking, whether that restrains, in this case, Parliament from going ahead, or you need an application properly so filed to restrain you. Uh, this is the big issue on 97.3 CTFM. Mm -hmm. uh, my guests are uh, the Honorable Obi Amwa, Minister of State, Local Government, Decentralization and Rural Development, and MP for Ekapim uh, South, uh, which includes Eburi and all the nice places, <laughs> Pediasi and all the nice places. <laughs> And Dr. Dominica Yeni, former Deputy Attorney AG, and former Deputy Attorney General and Minister of Justice, and Member of Parliament for uh, Borga East. It's also. Chairman of Subsidiary. Chairman of Subsidiary. He doesn't do that. Oh, look at you. <laughs> you are Parliament. the former chairman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, okay. and, and Franklin Kujo. We'll, we'll take a short break. When we will come back, we'll deal with the other leg of the discussion. Uh, don't go away. <laughs> Hello, you're welcome back to The Big Issue. Uh, very big welcome to our TV viewers. We are live on 97.3 City FM and on social media. And we are just having a conversation around the happenings of the week. Major, major issue for the week has to do with the unpass between the executive, uh, the legislature, or the speakership, and then uh, the judiciary being called in to see if they could rescue the situation. The president, through his secretary, wrote back to the clerk we wrote to the clerk of parliament asking him to kindly desist and seize the transmission of uh, the bill, the anti-LGBT bill, to his office because of two pending applications before the Supreme Court. The speaker said he won't have any of that. The speaker feels that that constitutes an encroachment on the independence of parliament. And so uh, went ahead to also say that in equal measure, uh, he's been informed that an application for injunction in a pending matter that have versus the AG and the speaker or parliament uh, is being filed. And because of that, he was also unable to go ahead with passing or considering the approval of uh, some names the president submitted to parliament for vetting for ministers and deputies. After that, he closed parliament or his, he adjourned parliament. And now we yes, are all indefinitely. indefinitely. We, we are all here. Indefinitely, to put that in context, perhaps parliament was due to rise, right? Yeah. to go on recess yeah. and so he closed it down without taking comments from the two sides as usually the case uh, is and so minor majority is not happy about it they've issued a statement saying that what happened constituted uh, a stall in government business and the speaker appeared to be spearheading that and blame the minority so minority says no you brought this upon yourself and so once you brought it upon yourself you have to deal with the consequences of sin in fact they have signaled their intention to Institute impeachment proceedings against the president. Interesting days ahead. All right. On the second segment of the program, we're looking at Dr. Bahamir's comment to the Chamber of Commerce that the GRA appears to be harassing them. And when he comes as president in 2025, should that be the case? Well, if he comes as president in 2025, he will grant tax amnesty, amnesty to everybody. He will mm -hmm. start afresh and introduce a flat tax rate and all of that. Uh, the Chamber appeared happy with it. 
but we see how that plays. I will discuss that in the second segment of the program. My guests, uh, Honorable Obi Amoa, uh, Dr. Dominic Ayini, and Franklin Kujo will be joining us pretty shortly. All right, so b before the break, we were dealing with uh, the, the speaker and all of that. But there, there's also the argument that, of course, the family court might not have filed his application for injunction mm -hmm. at the time the speaker was speaking. Um, I've heard him speak. He's offered some explanation and all of that, but he's not here. So, But others have also said that because on the substantive rates, he had, you know, prayed for a relief seeking perpetual injunction on the process, right. uh, it should come for something. So going ahead to approve that <coughs> meant that you have, you'd have taken an action which was going to render the decision of the Supreme Court should it come in favor of that power of pornography. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't have been the way to are go. You, okay, so you do it. Are, are you a lawyer? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. <laughs> no, no. Yes, I, I am. I, yes. <laughs> I, want, I wanted to know. Yes, I am. And the next point is, would you advise your client this way? <laughs> no, but the, no, when we get there, we, we, we You understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, application for injunction doesn't happen only under such circumstances. Mm -hmm. Maybe a land dispute, mm -hmm. tenancy, anything that you can think of. And if you are a good lawyer, in quotes, you want to apply for injunction for your client, and you just say that by virtue of the fact that it's part of the reliefs, I've gone to sleep. Mm. But we should interpret it to mean that that is my intention mm. and use it to go the next step. I don't, I don't think any court will listen to this, mm. with all due respect. And it's never happened in, in any practice. <laughs> he was saying we are mates. This year will be 29 years mm. at the bar. And it's strange that anybody who just put in such relief will not take any step mm. to apply to justify why that injunction should be granted. Mm. Swearing affidavit as to what he truly believes to be the situation. And then tells us that take it as application for injunction and then maybe stop whatever you are doing. In any case, is it not interesting that a speaker in one breath says that the mere application for injunction does not stop any person from taking a step. But now he's telling us that by virtue of that same application, which didn't exist anyway, mm -hmm. as at the time he was speaking, by virtue of that same application, he's also telling us that he cannot proceed with that. No, I think the context, I think he was playing to the... the, the he was the not rule. playing to it. I have his speech here. No, I know. I mean, he, he, was, he was playing in accord with the team no. sung by the president. Mm -hmm. That because no. the matter is with the Supreme Court, I won't yeah, do yeah. it. You, and so in the end? same measure, mm -hmm. this one too you want me to do Let's do it is in practical terms. Mm. The step you took is very bad. Mm. You shouldn't have taken that step. Mm. But because you've taken that step, I also want to take that step. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand it. Mm. And it, uh, it will even be ridiculous. Mm. You're telling me that you don't agree with this legal position. Mm. And you have given me reasons why I don't agree with this legal position. And then you come out to tell me that even though this legal position is so bad, I don't agree. Mm. I also want to take the same step. Mm. I don't understand it. So, and in your case, mm. in your case, there's no, even no application for you to follow that step. Mm. I don't understand it. Mm. And so, some of these things, we should not gloss over them. Yeah, so, so I'm still on my point about the reliefs, right? Mm -hmm. So if the, the step to be taken will render the whole action, you know, otios when it's, it, when in, it's done. In any case, uh, you made that point mm. earlier. Yes. In any case, because I have, the, the, speaker, I have, I have mm. the, the, the race, the, the, race the, the, of uh, uh, my, uh, my, uh, good friend, my good friend, my good friend, Roxy Nelson <laughs> Eche. I don't know about the K. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have the full read here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you read it, uh, you then... You read the reliefs. Uh, of the course, reliefs, the, of the, course the, the reliefs. Mm -hmm. What is even interesting mm. is that if you read his application for injunction, mm. it becomes an afterthought. Mm. Why an afterthought? What because why? in his main read, yes. what he's saying is that those the president purported to have... Yes, sir. <laughs> in his main read... <laughs> This statement yes. of case, everything. What he's saying mm. is that those the president purported to have revoked their appointments, those persons should come back to parliament for vetting. Mm. They should not be reassigned. And he mentioned some of these ministers. That is all. That is all. That such persons, by the president's letter, have had their appointments revoked. Mm. And if the president says he's revoked I those appointments, sorry. Attorney General. If the president says he's revoked those appointments, <coughs> then 
<coughs> they should come for petty prayer approval by parliament. Mm -hmm. That's what he, he is seeking in court. But he's also said that it's, it's, it's and, one thing. It's, no, uh, it's, it's not one document. thing. Mm -hmm. Because if it was one thing, then by now you would have restrained those who have been vetted and have been passed and waiting approval <coughs> by parliament. Mm -hmm. You didn't do any such thing. How many days did it take for such persons to be vetted? Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. Until it came to uh, approval and speaker brought this up. And then you fight in Yanshi after. Mm. And seeking relief on this. It's saying that by virtue of the fact that the people have been vetted, it should not be approved until the president, that matter is resolved. How, how is he even connected? Mm. How is he connected? I, I said my somewhere, the president decides to appoint me as a minister. I go for vet. It is a speaker who referred this letter from the president to the appointments committee. Mm. The appointment committee is constituted. I'm called to appear before the committee. I appear, I respond, the questions are asked, everything. A report is prepared, submitted to parliament for approval by the whole parliament. How does that affect what the, you claim the president had done? Where a sitting minister has been reassigned. He's moved from one ministry to another. But you are saying that in that process, the way the, the president wrote the letter meant that that person's appointment had been terminated. So if he's going to another ministry, then he should come to Parliament for prior approval. Mm. And this is what the matter in court, what the Attorney General and everybody is supposed to defend. So how does that relate to somebody who has just been nominated and he has to go for vetting mm. to be approved? There are two distinct things. No. So why would you then go and apply for injunction after the Speaker has made this point, <laughs> when you have not applied for it? No. You know, after thought, <laughs> what is this whole business of... That's why I say the speaker is turning out to be opposition speaker, leader. Uh, did the speaker err uh, in, in the way he sought to ground his, uh, his right, suspension? You can't, you can't ask me this question here. <laughs> oh, former, no, no. former attorney general, maybe in the next 20 years, future attorney general. You want no, to, in the next 20 years. <laughs> He's seeking to come back next year. <laughs> you are telling him, did the speaker no, I mean, the, the, the speaker, uh, the, 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 the speaker from the search report right. of the, find, the find attorney general. Of asking the, the attorney, the why is, why is, the attorney why is, general. What's the general it, opinion? It, 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 <laughs> don't say it that you don't respond. <laughs> you know, it, it, it does appear that indeed the, 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 there was no application before the Supreme Court yeah. in respect of injunction. Right. From the, the attorney general search report we've seen. Yeah. The speaker based his decision to <clears throat> suspend the approval of the ministers on something that did not exist. That that, that obviously is not the right way to go. The speaker air or you, did he air or no, you think no, that he was, he was misled? No, ask that question. No, well, the, the, um, the leading part. No, the, the, from, from everything that has been presented, mm. right, I have seen the letter of the Attorney General mm -hmm. to, the, to the right honorable speaker, um, in which, you know, to which he has attached the, the search, search report. report, right? And that search report, I think, uh, the search was conducted at 9.15 mm -hmm. uh, on the 21st. The speaker's uh, speech uh, or ruling was on the 20th. And then I've also seen the motion for injunction mm -hmm. filed by the Honorable Roxin the mm -hmm. which, you know, was also filed uh, at 10.15 10, yeah. uh, of uh, the 21st. Meaning that as a matter of fact, at the time that the speaker gave his ruling, okay, there was no pending application. application. Having said that, I don't think that the speaker aired, all right, um, in law, mm. when he said that, given the pendency of the action before the Supreme Court, okay, uh, he might have referred to an interlocutory, you know, injunction, all right, but of course, in his uh, writ, the Honorable Roxin Dafia uh, was also seeking a perpetual injunction, mm. all right, and basically what the, the speaker did was to say that the pendency of the, the I mean, uh, the suit in court, all right, and the fact that it touched upon the um, question of the appointment of ministers. That in and of itself was sufficient grounds for him to say that Parliament will not proceed until the Supreme <coughs> Court has come, I mean, out with its uh, ruling on this matter. Now, I, my friends in the MPP are always fun of uh, uh, having to eat their cake and have it. Oh, which is in one breath, you are saying that the President of the Republic is an adherent of the rule of law, he does not want to undermine the I mean, independence of the judiciary. Um, he wants to respect the courts. And that is why he has stayed his hand with respect to even receiving, 
not even not the signing, but even receiving the bill. That is a subject matter of uh, you know the dispute. All right. This is the argument that they are, they are using. And I remember when you played the voices of uh, Honorable Harun Ejusu and another person. That person cited an old authority. Yeah. I think that it uh, is a land matter yeah. in which this, I mean, it, there's the. So that's the Sefua, who is a right. newly minted lawyer. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and basically he was supporting the, 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 I mean, the president's position in saying that the mere pendency of the action is sufficient basis for you to stay your hand because if you take any step, that has the potential of undermining, you know, the uh, substantive relief sought by a plaintiff, yeah. then it, the, um, it means that you are, I mean, uh, uh, undermining the administration of justice. And that is why the president actually stayed his hand. Mm -hmm. This is the justification that they were giving. Mm -hmm. All right. Why do they think that the Mr. Speaker, you know, should not stay his hand when a matter, even if peripherally, you know, deals with the issue of the appointment of, uh, of min I mean, ministers? I think that what the speaker did was also, I mean, in, in like manner, a re, I mean, respecting the independence of the judiciary mm. and then seeking not to undermine dependency of the, of the suit that is in, I mean, in, in court. Mm. Okay, so I don't think that um, it is uh, right to say that just because the interlocutory injunction application was not filed at the time that he made reference to it, that the speaker was wrong, okay? Having said that, you see, this whole, I mean, a drama that has taken place, right? It is quite unprecedented, but it also throws up one thing, mm. that in the scheme of things, okay, that is a separation of powers under the Constitution, there is a need for mutual toleration, okay, by the various, you know, arms of government, the various branches of government, all right? The reason why we have separation of powers is for the various branches of government to integrate you know, and work well for the benefit of the people of the country. Uh -huh. So what the constitutional scheme for lawmaking as outlined in, an, I mean, uh, Article 106 must be respected by, I mean, uh, both arms of government, the executive branch as well as, the, I mean, uh, the, um, uh, the legislative branch. And where there is a dispute as to whether any one of them is transgressing the constitution, uh -huh. it is a third branch of government, that is the judiciary, that will have the final, I mean, say, See. with respect to whether or not, I mean, a, a transgression has taken place. And for me, if the executive is saying that they are stickless for the rule of law and because of that, they will not take, an, I mean, any action coming, stemming from the judicial, I mean, from the legislative branch, just because there is a, pen, a matter pending before the judiciary, okay, then the same principle equally applies to the legislative mm. branch. And I think that that is what, that is what uh, you yes. know, happened. Okay. That, that's the, that's <coughs> Dominic, the politician. <laughs> but not Dominic, the lawyer. No, Dominic, the lecturer. There's this um, case uh, I want to refer to, to see if this, to, to bring some clarity to this. Uh, the Republic versus uh, EHA, the second and others, ex-party Togobo and, and, and others. It's a 2005 matter. The, 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 the court, the, I think the, the, the court of appeal, uh, yeah, the Court of Appeal, mm -hmm. uh, the Quran is Asari, Quran as Asari, Quran. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which year is that? 2005. 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, so one, uh, GLR 328. Um, let me, um, so let me just, yeah, uh, page, uh, let, me, let me just, repeat. so I said, mm -hmm. the principle is that if a party knowing of the existence of a case, that is a writ, a petition, or a motion, pending before an adjudicating body seeking to restrain an act, makes a decision himself to deal with and grant the very remedy to himself without giving opportunity to the adjudicating body to hear the matter. He commits contempt. And he, they make reference to the now versus Dombo, Court of Appeal, mm -hmm. August, I mean, March 23, 1970, unimported, digested, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, the applicant's case was effectively killed, frustrated, where the applicant's case was effectively killed, frustrated prejudice, and rendered purposeless when the applicant was bundled out of Ghana and removed from the, the jurisdiction before mm -hmm. the court could, could hear the case. So the point being made here is that even though uh, an application for injunction may not have been filed, the fact that, you know, uh, there was the existence of a case, a writ or a petition or whatever, seeking a relief like that, and you knowing of it, going ahead to deal with it, that makes you commit contempt. Right. <laughs> but, but you see, Selom, um, what, I mean, that, 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 that principle that, mm. you know, was enunciated in that case, mm. all right, is a general principle of mm. law, all right? 
in the specific case mm -hmm. of you know um, constitutional adjudication, mm -hmm. all right, or public law, yeah. all right, the principle specifically is that you cannot issue an injunction, okay, to restrain the performance of a public function mm -hmm. unless there are special circumstances that warrant the grant of the of the injunction. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you are alleging a breach of the constitution, all right, you are not here saying that. Um, you know, I mean, uh, uh, the action will injure somebody in their limb or their life or their property. Okay, but you are saying that we want to up uphold the public law value mm -hmm. of the sanctity of the Constitution and therefore restrain Mr. Mr. I mean, uh, uh, X or this institution or agency of state from taking certain steps. The court will evaluate the situation. Mm -hmm. And unless there are special circumstances, Okay, uh, for instance, there will be irreversible harm caused, you know, to the general public as a whole or a segment of the public as a result of the actions of that state agency. Mm -hmm. The injunction will not be granted. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think the Mr. Speaker cited, you know, the authority. I was trying to, I mean, uh, um, recall what he what he mm -hmm. said. He cited that injunction, and the dicta of uh, Justice Dateba, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, a JSC as yeah. he then was. Yeah. All right, in that in that matter. So. If we are looking at um, a public law matter of, I mean, of the kind that is pent, the kinds that are pending in court, okay, I do not think that, I mean, um, either the president or Mr. Speaker should be staying their hand on any matter. I would, if I were the, the Attorney General, I would have advised the president, all right, to Just comply to with the out, Constitution. Go, go ahead and, and do yeah, to go I, I, I ahead and comply with the Constitution, okay. Because of the fact that, for instance, if you are dealing with the, I mean, the anti-gay bill, all right, first of all, I even have, I mean, uh, issues with filing an action, you know, contending that a bill is unconstitutional, unconstitutional. all right, because a bill, a bill is no more law. yeah, it's, it, not, it's, it's, not, yet it's not yet law, it's, it's, it, it is empty of any legal content, mm. so it does not, it cannot affect anybody, uh, you know, or alter rights and liabilities, you know, and so on. Until it has been assented to by the president and gazetted, then it becomes law and it can alter rights and, and, and li I mean, affect liabilities and obligations and so on. That is when you can then say that in its content, it offends the constitution in any material particular. But for you to say that the bill, you know, which, has, which is yet to become law is unconstitutional, I have a problem with that. So for me, the president should have gone ahead, all right, to comply with the, you know, the details of the Constitution by assigning reasons, mm -hmm. okay, articulating reasons why he would not want to sign the bill and take it back to Parliament. Mm -hmm. I think his fear is that he could not marshal the two test, ma I mean, a, 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 a majority. Mm -hmm. Or, let, let me put it no, no, this way. Is a proponent who must marshal the two tests. Yeah, the two tests majority. We must, I mean, do, the proponent. Yeah, so, so he could get his people. He, he could get to, his, yes. To, to, that, that is to, that to is not to be part. Of, not to be no, part of no, it. No, you see, no, you see. Don't put it that way. Uh huh. Or the way at all. No, the 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 whip. This this matter. This matter. This matter. They did not even bring up whips. Yes. People were ready to stay their position. After all, what people forget is that two of our members were part of the private members' bill. Why did they why did they leave? They haven't left. No, I think Reverend okay. Fordjo is still there. They but haven't I don't left. know about the other person. And the appear could be. Okay. Yes. They haven't left. Yes. So the, the strategy should not be created that it's one sided. But when you get to the floor, they create that impression. Mm. Which and and you're saying this doesn't bring up the matter of the whips? If if the yeah, whips it does. thing no, no what this is private okay. members' bill. Yes. yes. But one. but if it affects if it private affects bill, one. if it affects the two, me in a certain way. To by and large. Mm -hmm. I mean by and large, almost everybody thinks that some of these things should be regulated mm. by and large because you had a situation where people were ready to even invest in promoting this mm -hmm. and people were abhorred we, we are parents mm -hmm. yeah, i have children i, I even have a grandchild mm. and i don't want them to grow up in such uh, environment and in such situation so any day i'll be against it mm. but doesn't mean that i should not recognize the rights of such persons yeah is it, okay. is it a case that mm -hmm. I'll let you complete? No, number it, two. No. Number two. Okay. I don't want us to go back to this injunction. Mm. I agree with him largely. Mm. And there are several cases that when Parliament begins to act as far as the bill is concerned, until it becomes law, it will be difficult for you to go to the Supreme Court for them to stop, stop it. it. Mm. Except that there's this Pakistani case where 
at the point where the bill had to be assented to, they, they said that no, they could stop it mm. because of the implications. I will look for the case, but mm. that's that, that yeah. case. But the, by and large, until the bill becomes an act, for you to be able to hold it and say that this is what parliament has passed, I don't agree. So it could mean that this action could be dead on arrival. Is that, is that no, no. I mean, every <laughs> case sometimes has its own mm. situation and merits. That's why I brought in this mm. Pakistani case. The, the, but that could only be persuasive. If, yeah, fine. Be but I'm saying that in, in this situation where, I mean, I grant you that I know where you're coming from. But that, that Siam Epoch situation is different. Mm. V very well. It's, it's different. It's, it's, I it's, mean, it's, if you look at this, even his own affidavit, mm. it exposes the whole mm. thing. The, so is it a case and that... The law, mm. equity, equity is the vigilant, the vigilant. The, not, not the indolent. indolent. Mm. By the time you file this even application for injunction, vetting has been concluded, mm. reports have been submitted. Indeed, if the speaker had not been in town and had allowed the first deputy speaker to sit on it, approval would have been made. Because mm. even though initially it was by majority, later on it became by consensus. Mm -hmm. So it could have just by voice vote approved such persons. And it's after that that you are going to fire this. Mm. And you want equity to aid you in this matter. Mm. There, there, there's, there's a general view out there that MPs, <laughs> MPs are, the, are quite... Well, in constitutional adjudication, yeah. equity, equity does not... Uh, equity does equitable come. principles cannot be invoked no, but when the, when to, 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 to undo a constitutional... When the right. act has already been done, <laughs> they are not going to apply for injunction. <laughs> they should go for another remedy. That no, right. no, the the, the yeah. act had, had, you know, hasn't been done. It hasn't been done. No, what I'm saying is that... Been, what if I'm speaker saying hadn't been that, around. Yes. But well, that's an if. No, no, no. What I'm <laughs> saying is that the act of referring such persons to appointments committee mm. being vetted and a report having been made and then just at the point where the parliament will have to take a final decision, you are now going to apply for application uh, injunction. To injunct the approval. <laughs> to, to inject the approval. Oh, you know, yeah, there's a general view out there that, remedy than that this MPs remedy. are quite apprehensive about voicing their opposition, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. to this anti-LGBT bill because the chiefs and the opinion leaders and the elders in your community and constituencies have told you that they do not want this. Right. And so go and then speak for us, of indeed course. your representatives. So even though you may have a personal view about how to tweak it here and there, mm -hmm. you guys are a bit afraid to make these views known because those views could be interpreted by your constituents and community as you being in support of, of the course. activities of LGBT. Is yeah, that, that a that's, a, that's a challenge we have. Mm. In a sense, that in the first place, people may not even understand the issues. Mm. Yeah. People will not appreciate how a bill is even made. Mm. Because at the concentration stage, sometimes so many amendments will be proposed that the bill would have to be sent back. Mm to the proposers, yes. so that, I mean, to bring the whole thing again. But to the ordinary person, there's a bill in parliament. It's anti-gay. Yeah. You should show that you support it or not. Mm -hmm. Even if you say that, yes, correct here, mm -hmm. that can be used against you yeah. in our politics. And unfortunately, some people who should know better even play such games. But the reality is that if we were to educate some stakeholders, a chief, a pastor, opinion leader, whoever, to even know how a bill becomes bill. It becomes law. Law. Some of these things will not happen. Mm. And for Papa Kana's sake, you may say that, hey, Obi Amwa is talking about the rights of gay persons. Then he supports gay mm. activity. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a misconception and a, just propaganda that People should know better, should even know better. Mm. That is the challenge we have. And it is true, indeed, it's true. That some people may chicken out because it will be used against them in their well, Was that what you referred? Yeah. Was that is that the reason why you said some of them were not intimidated, but they, they could not make their points on the floor of parliament? Both. Could that be a reason? Both. One making a point on the floor of parliament and being screamed at, mm. not even allowing you to be heard. Mm. It happened. It happened. I saw it myself and I was worried. And right. the speaker, the, the one presiding didn't have any problem, or the person didn't yeah. see it. The one presiding would just say, honorable members, honorable members, 
But if the person is <laughs> if the person is intimidated enough, oh, he will just sit down. I think Mr. Speaker has been very He is uh, not the only person very, who is very, even sitting on this. Yeah, okay, that's yeah, that, true. That's true. true. Mm. You know, but, they've but, been but, protective but, they've been protective of members. But the speaker's personal interest in this is would it allow even dissenting? Oh, I don't, I don't, very I don't, interested I don't think the speaker has a personal interest. Mm. Uh, oh, strictly yes. strictly and properly yes. so called. Mm. I mean there's there's no because if you say he has a personal interest. Then he's a Catholic, he cannot allow this. Right. I mean, so he's taking a stance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. It's not, it's not an interest as such. He's okay. taking a stance, you know, um, against the promotion of uh, gay activities in mm -hmm. the country and so on. Mm -hmm. So from, I mean, a, a religious point of view, he has taken a principal stance, mm -hmm. uh, which is also supported by others. For instance, uh, mm -hmm. my good friend Obi Amua mm -hmm. just referred to the fact that he's a Christian. Mm -hmm. And because of his Christian upbringing, I mean, he would not even support the certain. Upbringing. Yes, and the, uh, there are I cultural mean, issues. And even also. The All right, but <laughs> I, I don't think that Mr. Speaker's stance uh, on this matter has stood in the way um, of giving members the opportunity <coughs> to be able to articulate their views on the floor. Mm. All right, the fact that you know people have become very, emo I mean, uh, uh, mm. emotional about this, and at some point in time during the consideration stage, it was sometimes very embarrassing because. Uh, members who stood up to say, um, to make amendments mm -hmm. that the proponents or their supporters thought were meant to water down the, I mean, uh, the, the content of the bill, mm -hmm. okay, uh, were shouted at, okay, they were, they were, I mean, virtually shut out, I mean, of the debate. Sometimes the speakers tried to protect them, but it didn't, I mean, it, it wasn't very, I mean, uh, effective. So for me, um, Mr. Speaker himself, has taken a stance, and we all know that he has taken that stance. That has not intimidated a lot of us from making our views known, you know, either at committee, okay, or on the on the floor of the house. In my in my past, I mean, uh, uh, you know, individual case. All right. Of course, I know that some of my chiefs, you know, anytime I meet them in the constituency, have said. Uh, that uh, don't, uh, don't, don't that, come back without you, passing you, you, right, you know, I mean, don't come so, back so, the and I, I'm a representative of the people. Mm -hmm. I must reflect, you know, their views, uh, their values. If I disagree with them, I will. I mean, I have to make it clear to them that I disagree and educate them to understand mm -hmm. why I disagree with them. But I can't come to the the floor of Parliament and flout the directions. I mean, or the directives that they have given me from mm -hmm. the constituency. Okay, so. Um, I uh, so I say that you may disagree with the views of the chiefs, but because they sent you here, you, you come and vote in favor of that. If, if I cannot, if I cannot, um, you know, if I cannot convince them mm. of my position, then I have to reflect uh, really? what they yes, because they because they have elected me. They, Even though there will be various shades of opinion in your constituency. Well, you see, the, uh, Selom, the problem is that there is no scientific way of mm. knowing. All right. I haven't conducted any polls in my constituency to find out what the majority of my constituents think. Mm. But they are representatives. The chiefs, they talk to me. Ordinary people, they talk to me. And my sense is that they are against, mm. you know, I mean, uh, the promulgation, I mean, the, the promotion <laughs> of gay and lesbian activities in this country for religious and cultural reasons. All right. So on account of that, whatever, I mean, proposals that I had, okay, I made them at committee. When it came to the floor, I took a, I mean, I took a sense, I got a sense of what the majority view was. Mm. And if I knew that I was going to be voted down on any issue, I never even bothered myself to, to stand up and articulate it. Mm. Mm. Yes. Whole, even though you, you know, articulated it could convince <laughs> some of yeah. your colleagues to join in that position. Right. So that minority position, I mean, quote unquote, could have in the end become a majority view because you would have unlocked certain things which might not have occurred to people. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you, you just... Yeah, and, and, and if I made, if I made uh, the position clear at committee, mm. uh, and most of, my, most of my views, except on the issue of sentencing, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, or the, the steepness of the, of the punishment, mm. um, the, most of my views were accepted at committee. Mm. And, you know, they were reflected in the, in the, in the, in the, 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 in the document yeah. itself. So I didn't also want to be seen to be fighting the proponents after I have gone to committee and helped them out. You remember the Honorable Sam George actually mm -hmm. mentioned the fact that I was very helpful, mm -hmm. you know, in shaping, I mean, the, the, I mean, the bill. Um, and I didn't want to be seen fighting them, mm -hmm. you know, on the floor after having 
persuaded them to take a certain position at committee. Mm. So the dynamics of the bill, this bill, are it's, very it's peculiar. A, it's a special bill. It's a, a kind of <laughs> special <laughs> bill. So, but, but so, the, the, the uh, issue, yeah. the, the issue <clears throat> about promotion. Yes. And and how, how how will society grow if there's no advocacy? If mm -hmm. we, we can't even talk about it, mm -hmm. how, how will society evolve? Because many things in the past were seen as wrong. Right. But upon conversations and debates and you know, I won't call it hardcore advocacy. Yeah. The view of society has changed. Mm -hmm. For example, the world was flat. The world is 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 round or, mm -hmm. or spherical. That was a debate, and people who initially thought the world was spherical were killed. Mm -hmm. But over time, we have realized that no, they were they were right. Mm. Time changes views, or time makes things clearer. No, in this me, case, you let me we, help, we, let we, me. we can't we, we can't even talk about mm -hmm. it. Let me help my good friend. Oh, <laughs> he makes he makes a good point about representing the people, mm. and for the fact that key opinion leaders would want a certain situation. And he has to come to Parliament to represent them. Mm. That is what it is. But my other point is, even in agreeing that we should have legislation against such practices, we should be able to look at the law and ensure that the right things are mm. done. Mm -hmm. So that we we'll go back to your chief and say, yes, we have the bill for you. Mm. This is the law that we have made, which is against such practices. That's all that they want. As to how you nuanced it, how you shaped it to the point that now it's acceptable or almost acceptable everywhere. That will be within our, our purview and our hands. Mm. Great. They don't expect that because they say, uh, then go and put it, anybody who is found to be gay should be killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Girl, understand. I understand Franklin has joined the discussion. Uh, yeah. let, let, me, let, me, let me bring in a civil society view. Uh, hello, Franklin Kujo. Welcome to the program. Happy to have you as always. So I know you've been observing this from uh, a civil society viewpoint and your own views as well. Uh, what do you make of the impasse? Uh, executive, legislature, you think the president should have gone ahead to just give an accent to it? You think the speaker? I mean, what's your general view about what has been happening this week? Good morning to you and good morning to the learned friends in the studio. Um, <laughs> this, this, this is becoming one great cantata, really. Uh, and I'm, I'm probably enjoying it. So we, are, we are all involved in cantata. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm just enjoying it. Um, as a student of government or politics, I think this is really, really interesting. I only worry that the impasse could lead to, um, I mean, certain... I mean, it would have certain tools on the economy and indeed the governance process. But indeed, we should learn, we should, we should, we should be wiser out of this particular uh, care if we manage to get through it. Um, spe specifically on the issue of these injunction uh, purpose, I mean, injunction, um, that I call it legal terminology or term. I think I've heard, listened to many, many lawyers, including the astute ones in the studio, uh, and again, I'm, I'm not so clear as to when to actually use an injunction or uh, a party should respect an injunction. I think the Supreme Court must be loud and clear, probably for once, on this particular uh, issue. Because uh, depending on who you listen to, they will tell you that, well, it has to be contextual and that, uh, uh, I mean, the Supreme Court itself maybe had applied this uh, injunction based on, uh, I mean, given the context of a particular issue, but it doesn't seem to go away. And to see both parliaments and the executive employ this particular legal to uh, to say that, to stay their hands on doing what is important for the state, it's quite it's quite telling on on, on, on governance and indeed the the law. And I think that the Supreme Court must once and for all give us context or must must clarify exactly where an injunction will really. Um, uh, be useful. Having said that, I think these matters that have gone to that have that have.